Hello dear students, today we're going to talk about uh, topic number one, abdominal hernias. I'm your uh, lecturer, Shevchenko Alexander, Baltic Federal University, Medical Institute, Kaliningrad 2020. First of all, I want to uh, congratulate all of you with the beginning of a new course. In the course of faculty surgery, we talk about more interesting things than in the course of general surgery. We talk more about diseases in this year, specifically about abdominal wall hernias, acute appendicitis, peptic ulcer and its complications, stomach cancer, acute and chronic cholecystitis, peritonitis, diseases of the liver, and in the second semester we took look precisely on the urology. We discussed diagnostic methods in neurology, anomalies of urinary tract, urolithiasis, non-specific inflammatory diseases of urinary tract, tumors of urinary tract and kidney, diseases of the prostate, etc. Uh, first of all, I want to show you uh, one episode from Serious uh, Friends. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. Okay. <laughs> hey, Timmy. I've got a surprise for you. Hold it. I'm sorry. The surprise is a new swing set. If you could play it a little less intense. Well, yeah, sure. No problem. I'll just I'll hold on one second. Oh. Hey, Timmy. I've got a surprise for you. Oh my god! <laughs> All you who watch recently uh, Serious Friends know this uh, episode called uh, The One with the Joyous Hernia. What is a hernia? Definition of hernia. Abdominal hernias are defined as the abdominal protrusion of intra-abdominal contents through congenital or acquired areas of weakness in the abdominal wall. Uh, sometimes uh, some teachers say uh, not only protrusions, uh, abdominal hernias must be covered by the uh, parietal sheath of the peritoneum. If we don't have a uh, peritoneal, uh, parietal peritoneal sheet uh, on the abdominal contents, uh, this is called eventration. Parts of the hernia. As you see here, uh, we can see uh, orifice of the hernia. Uh, it's the most uh, it's the most uh, most uh, dangerous part of the hernia, where it, where it can be uh, incarcerated. Uh, we have hernial contents. We have parietal layer of the hernia, uh, which called hernia sac. We have the top of the hernia, which um, obviously on the top of the bulging of the our abdomen abdo of the patient uh, abdominal wall. What causes uh, hernias? First of all, uh, being male, men are eight, eight times more likely to develop an inguinal hernia than a woman. Being older, muscles weaken as you age. Family history. Uh, if you have close relative, such as parent or sibling who has this condition, you can also have hernia. Chronic cough, such as from smoking. Chronic constipation. Constipation causes straining during bowel movements. Pregnancy. Being pregnant can weaken the abdominal muscles and cause increased pressure inside your abdomen. Premature birth and low birth weight. Previous inguinal hernia or hernia repair. Even if your previous hernia occurred in childhood, you are at higher risk of developing another inguinal hernia. 
What is the pathogenesis? First of all, incomplete closure of the abdominal wall in case of congenital hernia, increased abdominal pressure, and increasing the high sense of fascia structure with accompanying loss of abdominal wall strength. Uh, there are four categories of an anatomically classified abdominal hernias include following ventral hernias, example gratia epigastric, umbilical, incisional hernias, groin hernias, inguinal and he femoral hernias, pelvic hernias, obturator, sciatic and perineal hernias, and flank or lumbar hernias. Uh, we don't often uh, talk about pelvic hernias because you didn't, uh, you will not see them too much often. But ventral hernias and uh, groin hernias you will see uh, very often. Here uh, I give you a table with frequency of abdominal wall hernias. As you see on the first place, inguinal hernia, then go incisional, umbilical, epihastric, paraumbilical, femoral, lumbar, and then only up to rater, 0.5% of all hernias. What is the symptoms of the hernia? A bulge of the, in the area or on either side of your pubic bone, which becomes more obvious when you're upright, especially if you cough or strain. A burning of or aching sensation at the bulge. Pain or discomfort in the bulge, especially when bending over, coughing or lifting some weight. A heavy or dragging sensation in the bulge. Weakness or pressure in the bulge. Uh, diagnostics usually a clinical diagnosis imaging indicated if the diagnosis is unclear and or to identify contents of the hernia sac example gravity whoops of bowel ultrasound especially useful to identify ventral hernias example gravity epigastric spigillian incisional or umbilical hernia. Uh, intravenous or and oral contrast enhancing CT scan useful for suspected hernias that may be difficult to identify on physical examination. Example gratia lumbar obturator perineal or sciatic hernia. Findings abdominal wall defect with or without protrusion of intra-abdominal contents through it. Abdominal X-ray indicated if an obscured and or strangulated hernia is suspected. Findings. Feature of bowel obstruction. Dilated bowel, uh, dilated bowel loops, proximal to obstruction, collapsed bowel loops, distal to obstruction, multiple air fluid levels with or within dilated bowel loops. Here we see complications of the hernia. Before we talk about hernia, we must understand what does it mean reducible hernia. Hernial contents completely return to the abdominal cavity through the abdominal wall defect on lying down or upon application of mild external pressure, as we see on the first picture. Most reducible hernias manifest as an asymptomatic non-tenderness mass. Increases on straining, example gratia sitting up from a recumbent position. Decreases completely on lying down. Visible cough impulse present. Expansion of the hernia when the patient is asked to cough. Edges of the fascial defects are palpable. Bowel sounds may be heard over the mass if the hernial contents is bowel. We have also a uh, very specific uh, sign. When people cough, you can place your hand on the bulging and if you palpate 
some uh, push through the abdominal wall, it means hernia is reducible. Irreducible, incarcerated hernia. Hernial contents become adherent to the hernial sac and cannot be reduced into the abdominal cavity. Irreducible non-tender mass, visible calf impulse present, may decrease partially on lying down, increased risk of obstruction and strangulation. Obstructed hernia. Obstructed hernia, sorry. The abdominal wall defect acts as a tourniquet around the hernial, hernial contents causing edema and distension of the hernial contents. Acute pain at the site of the hernia. Features of the closed bowel whoop bowel obstruction if the hernial contents is bowel. Absent calf impulse. And features of the strangulated hernia. Ischemia and necrosis of the hernial contents due to compromised vascular supply. Acute pain at the site of the hernia, features of bowel obstruction, if the hernial contents is bowel. Signs of strangulation, a tender irreducible hernia, absent calf impulse, edematous erythematous warm overlying skin, toxic appearance, fever, signs of sepsis, may lead to intestinal gangrene, fatal if, live, if left untreated. We have two basic types of strangulation, elastic and fecal. What does it mean? Uh, fecal obstruction means then we have irreducible hernia in which uh, due to constipation uh, into the lumen of the bowel going, uh, going more and more fecal and uh, this loop which uh, placed in the hernial sac um, become more dilated and with time it become irreducible and then strangulated what does it mean elastic strangulation when the bowel loop in the abdominal wall due to the uh, lifting of heavy weight go to the uh, orifice and go to the hernia sac in the larger portion than usually then muscles uh, in the relaxed uh, condition this bowel cannot go back to the abdominal cavity this is, this is we call elastic obstruction or strangulation. Principle of surgical treatment. As you know from the third course, first of all, in every surgical operation, it's surgical approach. Then operative maneuver. Place abdominal contents in or resect necrotized part of the bowels. Then we must close hernia orifice and next uh, third uh, as you know closure of the wound as in every situation we must uh, think about indications and contraindications to every procedure which we provide uh, in case of hernia repair has no absolute contraindication. Just as in any other elective surgical procedure, the patient's medical status must be optimized. Any medical issues, example gratia, upper respiratory tract or skin infection, poorly controlled diabetes mellitus, chronic constipation, urinary obstruction, persistent cough, obstruction of, or strangulation, or allergy to local anesthesia or prosthetic devices should be fully addressed and the operation divided accordingly. Patients with elevated American Society of Anesthesiologists scores or ASAN and high operative risk should undergo a full preoperative workup and determination of the risk to benefit ratio. Treatment. 
surgical hernia repair is recommended for the management of most abdominal hernias. Surgery open or laparoscopic tension free closure of the abdominal wall defect with or without mesh. Elective surgery is indicated in reducible and in and in incarcerated hernias. Emergency surgery is indicated in obstructed or strangulated hernias. Conservative management obstruction is indicated in congenital umbilical hernia in children less than 5 years of age, asymptomatic wide-necked hernias in patients with high operative risk. A truss or corset may be considered in this patient to decrease the risk of obstruction and strangulation. Hernias of linea alba. These hernias placed on the middle line of the human body, linea alba or uh, in Latin or white line, where the fascias of all abdominal muscles crosses. There is no uh, specific uh, diagnostic methods. You can use uh, your vision, you can use your hands, you can use ultrasound, or uh, if in case of obstruction, you can use uh, abdominal x-ray, where you can see dilated loops of the bowel. If obstruction, uh, if obstruction uh, occurs uh, for some time, and we have different uh, types of hernia repair in this case. We can use only repair. We can uh, place the prosthetic mesh on the uh, on the upper part of the uh, rectus abdominis muscle sheath. You can use inlay repair. Uh, which crosses uh, between the linea alba. Uh, this repair we use uh, like a bridge in case when we uh, treat the patient with uh, very large abdominal hernia in, and we must connect these uh, parts of uh, rectus abdominis mus muscles but uh, you must also uh, you must also think about compartment syndrome, and if some large parts of the bowel go outside of the abdominal wall for a long time, and you push it in, people can die because uh, compartment syndrome. It's very, very serious complication. People cannot breathe because um, bowels which go to the abdominal cavity back can push on the diaphragm and uh, these people cannot breathe as usual. Subway repair, non-bridging. We place our prosthetic mesh on the backside of the uh, abdominus rectus muscle sheath and subway repair bridging like in, like in inlay repair we can use prosthetic mesh to make uh, some improvised bridge between uh, muscles and you see two different abbreviations tap and tip what does it mean this is uh, two methodics of laparoscopic uh, hernia repair. Transabdominal, preperitoneal versus total extraperitoneal. You can see uh, this in the video on YouTube. Uh, I don't want to stop on this specifically because uh, you have so much materials that you must watch and you must so much uh, recap your anatomy if you want uh, understand what does it hernia repairs means because all in surgery starts from the anatomy
we have another specific type of hernia. It calls Spiegel N uh, hernia. Hernias that occur along the arcuate line are known as Spiegelian hernias. While rare, these hernias form due to the anatomic weakness of lack of a posterior rectus sheath below the arcuate line. As the hernia develops, peritoneum that passes through the arcuate line will pass laterally towards the external oblique muscle, given the overlying aponeurosis. Most patients present with the pain and swelling in the mid to lower abdomen. In consideration, is common as up to 20% of patients present with a non-reducible hernia. Given the high rate of incarceration, surgical repair is usually recommended. Either open or laparoscopic repair can be performed. The defect is closed by approximating the medial and lateral edges of the transversalis fascia to the rectus sheath. Umbilical hernias may be congenital or acquired. Umbilical hernias are common in newborns, especially in premature infants. Closure of an umbilical defect occurs after birth as the muscle of the rectus abdominal grow toward one another. Most umbilical hernias close spontaneously by five years of age and can be monitored as they will spontaneously resolve. Indications for repair include incarceration, symptomatic hernia, failure to decrease in size of if the defect fails to close by the age of five years. In others, uh, umbilical hernias form because of incarcerated abdominal pressure due to the pregnancy, obesity or ascites. Females are at higher risk for this type of hernia than men because of pregnancy, of course. Small asymptomatic hernias may be followed clinically. However, if an umbilical hernia enlarges in size, causes symptoms, or incarcerated, surgical treatment should be offered. Hernias can be repaired laparoscopically or with an open procedure. Mesh should be employed for large defects where the facial edges cannot be approximated without tension. In this case, mesh should be placed as a sublate technique below the fascia and sutured in place to prevent migration. As you see on this picture, uh, we go back to this um, definition troubles. Because as, you, uh, as I say below, if uh, our bowels don't cover by peritoneum, it causes gastroschisis. We can see bowels on the inside, or on the outside of the body. On Fawatsele, it means uh, we have peritoneal, uh, parietal peritoneum around the bowels, but we don't see skin around these bowels. And diastasis recti, recti means that uh, muscles of the abdomen is too weak and they go to the sides and some bubbles uh, may go further inguinal hernias may be congenital or acquired most adult uh, inguinal hernias are considered acquired defects in the abdominal wall. Physical examination is essential to the diagnosis of inguinal hernia. The patient should be examined in a standing position to increase interabdominal pressure, with the groin and scrotum fully exposed. Inspection is performed first with the hole of identifying an abdominal pouch along the groin or within the scrotum. If an obvious bulge is not detected, palpation is performed to confirm the presence of the hernia. Palpation is performed by advancing the index finger through, index finger through the scrotum towards the external inguinal ring. Uh, differences between uh, inguinal and femoral hernia, it's placement, because inguinal hernia placed in the 
inguinal triangle and femoral hernia in the femoral uh, channel. Incision of hernia. Hernias that develop at sites of previous abdominal incisions are known as incision of hernias. Hernias can develop at the site of any previous abdominal incision. Up to 20% of midline incisions will develop hernias eventually. Vertical incision may have a higher risk of hernia formation than transversal oblique incision. Upper abdominal incisions are also at higher risk than lower incisions. Laparoscopic port sites may also develop hernias. The etiology of incision of hernias is complex. Several uh, patient-derived factors increase the risk of hernia, including diabetes, immunosuppressants use, obesity, smoking, malnutrition, and connective tissue disorders. Local operative factors may also be implicated, including technique, wound infection, or high tension at the time of closure. Hernias can develop up to 10 years after surgery, but normally occur in the early postoperative period. Incision of hernias can be present as asymptomatic pouches or with severe discomfort. Multiple hernias can be present along the length of incision. Elective surgery should be recommended in patients who are uh, asymptomatic. Small defects pose a higher risk of incarceration and should be repaired. To improve operative outcome, patients associated uh, factors including smoking and obesity should be remedied prior to, superior, uh, to su surgical repair. Surgical management of incision of hernias include either primary tissue or mesh repairs. Hernias can also be repaired via laparoscopic or open approach. Simple suture repair is associated with recurrence rates as high as 54%. A Cochrane review of several randomized controlled trials found, found open mesh repairs improved hernia recurrence rates when compared to simple closure. 33% with a simple repair, with 16% with mesh repair. Mesh repair are, however, associated with a higher rate of infections. Assessment of the heart gut vitality. First of all, you must look at the gut color. Dark red or bluish, it's normal. Here you see white or normal. Uh, bowel. Weave of the visceral peritoneum, smooth, shiny, small hemorrhage under the serous membrane, no shine, made large areas of hemorrhage under the serosa, means this bowel isn't uh, um, viable. Condition of the mesentery, uh, it can be edematous, Vascul uh, vascular pulsation must be determined. The resection of the intestine to vermin with the hot wipes and the presence of peristalsis. The color must turn red and a must peristalsis appears. We must talk about special condition like a fast, false reduction. False reduction of hernia is an extremely rare condition of an incarcerated inguinal hernia, in which a hernia sac reduced into the peritoneal space with its contents, but the retained bowel remains incarcerated and the obstruction uh, persists. As you see on this picture, uh, our bulge uh, go back with the bowel back to the abdominal cavity, but it stay strangulated. False incarceration of hernia. This condition appears due to another inflammatory disease like appendicitis, uh, inflammatory uh, liquid go to the uh, hernia sac and uh, we have see inflammation on the skin because uh, 
most of all skin where we have hernia is less uh, less thick Richter's hernia Richter's hernia is special condition when not the bubble loop go to the hernial sac only only one side of the hernia uh, contramesenterical side go to the uh, hernia sac and become uh, become obstructed this is a very dangerous condition because uh, people with this type of hernia didn't have uh, don't have sorry don't have any uh, signs of bowel obstruction but uh, they have severe pain and uh, it's very vicious conditions be condition because uh, most of all Richter's hernia it's not very large bulge it's uh, like a small pimple like a centimeter or or less Midos hernia this is rare condition when our bowel loop go to the hernia sac and then uh, parts between this loop go back to the abdominal cavity and become obstructed literary hernia this is any hernia which contains the macular diverticulum. Sliding hernia. Sliding hernia, and this is another um, special condition. Uh, as I say um, previously, hernia must be um, laid, covered with uh, parietal peritoneum. But in case of sliding hernia, we have parts of the bowel which uh, covers the peritoneum is um, not uh, from the all sides, only from one side. These parts uh, of bowels or another organ of abdominal cavity covers uh, uh, lays extra peritoneal. Why are we talking about sliding hernia so so much? Because uh, as you see on this picture, when you try to uh, open the uh, hernia sac, you can open the uh, lumen of the bowel or uterus or uh, urinary bladder. Uh, if you are misunderstood with structure, you can cut. To, uh, to provide um, to provide precision uh, pre precision incision of the hernia sac, you must lie uh, the structure which you want to um, cut on your skissers. And when you see that uh, you see through this structure your skissers, that means you can cut it. If you didn't see your skissers through this structure, it, it can be <coughs> wall of the bowel or it can be wall of the urinary bladder. Most of them. Diaphragm hernia. Yes, we talk not uh, not only about abdominal wall hernia. Uh, this is another type of hernia. Uh, diaphragm hernia. It's a part of stomach which pops up through diaphragm into chest cavity. Uh, you won't see a bulge, but you might get heartburn, chest pain, and sore taste in mouth. Older people and pregnant women are more likely to have them. Pregnancy can be uh, can put pressure on the belly and weaken its muscles. They are typically treated with medications and lifestyle changes, like having several smaller meals rather than three large one, ones, or not lying down within three hours eating. 
If these methods didn't help, we can advise Nissan fund application with repair on the diaphragm hiatus. As you see on these pictures, um, we have special solution. We can uh, grab right part of the fundus of the our stomach and roll it up around the esophagus and then saturate, saturate the sides of the fundus with each one side. And is a quick recap. A protrusion or bulge of abdominal contents through the abdominal wall muscle fascia represents an abdominal wall hernia. This may be present at birth or acquired from weakness or, or disruption of the overlying fascia or from failed healing of surgical incision. Hernias may present as asymptomatic bulges that increase with valsava maneuvers or with significant discomfort. On physical exam, the patient's abdominal wall should be evaluated with the patient both standing and in a recumbent position. Hernias may reduce spontaneously or with manual pressure. If a hernia is incarcerated, it cannot be reduced and generally requires surgical correction. If intestine is incarcerated in the hernia defect, bowel obstruction may ensue, which represents a surgical emergency. Incarcerated hernias present with significant pain, nausea, and vomiting. A hernia is considered strangulated if blood supply to its contents is compromised. Localized ischemia may lead to infection and eventual perforation if left untreated. Non incision of hernias are named based on their location on the abdominal wall. Listen, I'm really glad you got the part. <laughs> but are you sure you can do this? Yeah. And hey, thanks for coming with me. Okay. And thanks again for helping me take a shower. <laughs> now, is that never talking about it again? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Joey, we're ready for you. Uh, Joey, this is uh, Alex. He's going to be playing your son. Hi, Alex. And uh, as you can see, my hand's not in my pants. <laughs> Okay. All right, uh, Alex. Now, when Joey says his line, take good care of your mama, son, that's your cue to cry. Got it? All right, let's do this. <laughs> Scene five, take one. And action. Take good care of your mama, son. Take good care of your mama, son. <laughs> Come on, son. Mama's good people. <laughs> Cut. Alex, remember, you're supposed to cry. Can you cry for us this time? Okay. All right, from the top. <laughs> Scene five, take two. Take 36 is up. All right, let's try this again. You ready, Joe? Uh, one thing. Um, is it all right with you if I if I scream right up until you say action? Uh, sure. Oh, action! Oh, I think good kid. <laughs> Cut! Oh, oh. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, Joe, why don't you uh, lift up your shirt? Take a look at this, kiddo. So I'm glad to see you. If you have any questions, you can uh, write down in the LMS system or in the WhatsApp chat. Um, or uh, if you want, we uh, can from time to time uh, make conferences in Zoom where you can uh, meet all together and uh, ask me some questions if you have. And I try to answer um, for all your questions. Goodbye.